General Dempsey, you, you uh, in one of your criteria for determining um, what we might do militarily, you say you have to ask the question of whether uh, the action is worth the cost and is consistent with law. What law does the uh, United States military look to? Yeah, if I could, since uh, I'd like to address both because they are related. So cost, resources, um, risk incurred elsewhere by the use of force one other place. So, you know, it's a zero-sum game. We take them from someplace else, we use them for how long, and, and uh, that's, that's the kind of issue of cost, is it? And, of course, in blood and treasure. Um, the issue of legal basis is, is important, though. Um, you know, we, again, we act with the authorized use of military force either at the consent of a government, so we're invited in, or uh, out of national self-defense, which, and it's a very, um, there's a very clear criteria for that. And then the last one is with some kind of international legal basis, an UNSCR. Wait a minute. Uh, let's talk about an international legal basis. Um, you answer under the Constitution to the United States government, do you not? And you don't need any international support before you would uh, uh, carry out a military operation authorized by the commander in No, of Chief, course not. That's the, the, sec that's the second well, one I mentioned. I just want to know that because there's yeah. a lot of references in here to uh, international matters before we make a decision. And I want to be sure that the United States military understands, and I know you do, that uh, it, it, we're not dependent on a NATO resolution or a UN resolution to execute policies consistent with the national security of the United States. So, so now, Secretary Pinella, you, in your talk, in your remarks, uh, you, you talk about, uh, uh, first, we're working, first, we're working to increase diplomatic isolation and encouraging other countries to join uh, the European Union and Arab League in, in uh, imposing sanctions. And then you note that China and Russia have repeatedly blocked the UN Security Council from taking action. Uh, are, are you saying, and is the President taking the position, he would not act um, if it was in our interest to do so if the UN Security Council did not agree? When it comes to uh, uh, the kind of military action where we want to build con uh, a coalition and work with our international partners, then obviously we would like to have some kind of legal basis on which to do it as we did in Libya. Now, uh, some sort of legal basis. We worried about international legal basis, but nobody worried about the fundamental constitutional uh, legal basis that this Congress has over war. We were not asked uh, stunningly in, in direct violation of the War Powers Act whether or not you believe it's Constitution. It certainly didn't comply with it. We spent our time worrying about the UN, the Arab League, NATO, and too little time, in my opinion, worrying about the elected representatives of the United States. Do you think that you can act without Congress uh, to and initiate a no-fly zone in Syria without congressional approval? You know, again, uh, our, our goal would be to, uh, to seek international permission, and uh, we would we would come to the Congress uh, and inform you uh, and determine uh, how best to approach this, uh, whether or not we would uh, want to get uh, permission from the Congress. Uh, I think those are issues we would have to discuss as we decide what to do here. Well, I'm almost breathless about that because what I heard you say is we're going to seek international approval and they will come and tell the Congress what we might do, and we might seek congressional approval. No, well, I want to just say to you, that's a big dish. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, you've served in the Congress. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree that that uh, would be pretty breathtaking to the average American? So would you no, like to clarify that? But I've, uh, I, I, you know, we, I've also uh, served uh, with Republican presidents and Democratic presidents who has all, always reserved the right to defend this country if necessary. But you, before we do this, you would seek permission of the international authorities. If we're, work, if we're working with an international coalition and we're working with NATO, uh, we would uh, want to be able to uh, get uh, appropriate permissions in order to be able to, to do that. That's, that's something that 
you know, all of these countries would want to have some kind of legal basis on which to act. Well, what legal basis are you looking for? What, what entity? Well, I, obviously, the U, if, if NATO made the decision to go in, that would be one. Uh, if, uh, if, we, if we developed an international coalition beyond NATO, uh, then obviously some kind of UN security resolution would so be an, the basis for that. So a coalition of, so you're saying NATO would give you a legal basis and uh, um, an ad hoc coalition of nations would provide a legal basis? If we, if, we, if we were able to put together a coalition uh, and uh, were able to uh, move together, then obviously we would seek whatever legal basis we would need in order to make that uh, uh, justified. I mean, you, you, you know, we, we can't just pull them all together uh, in a uh, combat operation without getting the, uh, the legal basis on which to act. Well, who are you asking for the legal basis from? If it's uh, obviously if the UN passed a security resolution as it did in Libya, we would do that. Uh, if uh, if NATO came together as we did in Bosnia, uh, we would rely on that. So you know we we have options here uh, if we want to build uh, the kind of international approach to dealing with the situation. Well, I'm for all for having an in international support, but I, I I'm really baffled by the idea. That, that somehow an international assembly provides a legal basis for the United States military to be deployed in combat. I don't believe it's close to being correct. They, have, they can provide no legal authority. The only legal authority that's required to deploy the United States military is uh, the Congress and the President and the law and the Constitution. Let, let me just for the record be clear again, Senator, so there's no misunderstanding. When it comes to the national defense of this country, the President of the United States has the authority under the Constitution to act to defend this country, and we will. Uh, if, it, if it comes to a, an operation where we're trying to build a coalition of nations to work together to go in and operate as we did in Libya or Bosnia, for that matter, Afghanistan, we want to do it with permissions either by NATO or by the international community.